This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 417 coming to you from the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the Sorgatron Media Studios. I'm Mike Sort at Sorgatron on Twitter for you guys out there. And we are ready for another awesome, awesome week. First of all, we have with us, he is the gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. He is John Chichilla, and he loves he loves gadgets. I do love gadgets. Yes. Gadgets they're amazing, the cameras, especially anything that can automate my life. That's right. Just to make things easier before it takes over the world. That's right. That's how they lull you in. How are you doing this week, sir? Pretty good. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful evening. I thought you were going to sing to Life's us. Life's good. I thought you were going to sing to us. I'm not going to. You don't no. want me to sing to one, you. One, one of these weeks, we'll, we'll just go full Mr. Rogers. Hey there. We Welcome should do, to like, the neighborhood. Those... Welcome to the awesome neighborhood. Will you be our awesome neighbor? Like... Everybody's done like a musical episode, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer had a musical episode. We need awesome cast the musical. Oh boy, oh boy. Well, this is it, and, and join us. The singer of the song is Brian Crawford of the River's Edge. Oh, oh. oh. joining us today, impromptu as impromptu, well. You yeah. just happen to be in the neighborhood. Happen to be in the neighborhood and desire tacos. Decided to be a good neighbor. Yes, actually, exactly. I was. I was really craving the slice on Broadway pizza, and I mm-hmm. usually like am chowing down on one in the middle of the shot. But I was so hungry, I, I already ate it before. Already before in there. we even started. Yeah. Of course, the River's Edge, who we listen to music on the live stream here uh, as we come in here. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Add a little flavor. Yes, flavor. <laughs> flavor, flavor. Brian Flava. Flava Crawford is joining us here at the show. <laughs> uh, but you guys can check out everything, and everybody's uh, joining us in the uh, uh, Facebook as well. Thank you to our friends out there. We're, of course, here live every Tuesday at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time at the uh, Awesome Cast Facebook page. Thank you, everybody. I've seen drop in already uh, Russell, Ty, Toddy, Mario, and Brandon, and Dave, and a whole bunch of people have pop- popped in and out here while we've been getting ready. Uh, thank you so much, guys, and you can catch us there. And also, please check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can find this in past episodes and links to subscribe. You can subscribe on your favorite podcast app and watch the video versions on Facebook and YouTube. Please rate and uh, rate and review wherever you are finding us. It helps us get in front of more people. Share it with a friend. You guys, share up like, hi, do you like awesome things? Here's an awesome thing that you should be listening to. And that can be, we can be your awesome thing of the week. Uh, you can email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast. And like the face, like I said, the Facebook page and the Facebook group where a lot of people contribute stories that we'll be getting to later in the show. Also, thank you to our streaming partners like Brian over here at riversedgepgh.com where they carry us uh, Saturdays at 9 a.m. And our friends on the West Coast at the 405media.com that are carrying us weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern so you can uh, you'll have lunch to some awesome cast. Uh, thank you so much for getting us in front of more ear holes here uh, all across the country. And if you want to be part of our studio audience or if you'd like to uh, reach out to our audience in general, please uh, head up for uh, inquiries for being here in studio to attend or uh, for advertising uh, or, or partnerships or whatever the case to uh, producer Missy over there at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com and thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesomecast our friends uh, Matt Weller and John Dickey DeGore at the Coffee Club $5 level they're going to get a, a extra content of us just talking about Final Cut and back in the day uh, Final Cut and the iMovies and the premieres uh, we kind of dig deep a little bit into some of our our video production um, backgrounds, and also our fan, a fan of the show, and dollar level, our friend at uh, Mike Mike Fedor joining us over there again. If you want to contribute, if you get value out of the show, you want to help it grow, patreoncom slash awesomecast. Every little bit helps. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. 
And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we'll we'll, we'll kick off with Chilla because he has something a little visual there. Yeah, the, what do you got going on over there? We, we 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 just tease a little bit about you making stuff easier, and uh, and and this is part of that. I'm sorry, I bit my tongue while I said that. That's okay. You can bite your tongue the, if you the, if you want to bite your tongue. Uh, so so, Crazy Krause got a video doorbell, a Ring video doorbell, that he didn't want, so I bought it off of him, and it is all things awesome. Um, so much like any other video doorbell, right? You, you mount the thing up, hook it up to your Wi-Fi. People hit the doorbell button. Your phone goes off. You can have other devices go off in your house, like an Amazon cube. Um, is it an echo cube? What is the fire? What is, the, is it a fire, fire cube? cube? Yeah. Something like that. It's, it's, it's cube. cubey. Yeah. Um, but so, so the nice thing is, is that I have had, I don't have a wired, doorbell like i don't have wiring to my electrical work to actually string together the typical um, doorbell so we have tried a multitude of wireless doorbells where it's just like rf tap it and it sets off sound in a box in the house with some i think it's 6d batteries or something like that um it never worked right people would you would hit it it wouldn't ring it just didn't work this works amazingly well. Comes with, you can mount it as is coming out of the box, or they actually have kind of like plastic pieces that you can put behind it. One will tilt it down on an angle. One will kind of tilt it in on like a 15 degree angle, angled in, um, depending on where your door frame is and where you want to point it to. Um, you can actually put them together. So I actually have mine with the downward mount and the inward mount to make sure that I get my full front porch and out down a couple steps. You ring the doorbell almost immediately. Um, you get a notification on your phone. I get a notification on my watch. Um, you can uh, watch who's at your door and, and graciously ignore them. <laughs> or you can tap the little green button and it starts a conversation. You can see they can't see you, but you can see them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have ours set up for motion, so we get a motion alert if there's if there's motion on the front porch. We actually have it set up for five feet of motion. That's why I was wondering because the, the things that I have, like the wise cams, like I can set up motion, but it'll get everything moving. So what this is supposed to do? So this, I guess you could say, is not so awesome, but it works pretty darn well. Um, it's supposed to have kind of like a sensor to figure out how far the object is away from the camera. Okay. So there's like a depth sensor. There's a depth sensor. So I have mine set to five feet, Mm -hmm. which I will say doesn't pick up anyone just walking on the sidewalk in front of the house. It doesn't pick up animals. Doesn't pick up cars. Cause our, we're right on, I mean, we're pretty close to the street. Yeah. Um, oddly enough, it picks up if the, object on the street is like above i would say 10 feet tall Mm -hmm. it will pick that up as if it's within like a bus or something right it has to like the garbage truck okay a moving truck anything that's extremely high it will it does pick up it's not the worst thing in the world right you see the the video and you're like "Eh, it's garbage truck the interesting thing is, and depending on your level of paranoia, they have a neighbor's portion of the app. So I can take any video that it grabs, whether it's based on motion detection, someone ringing the doorbell, whatever, I can take it and I can actually tag it with like information or suspect or crime, mm-hmm. and it will actually alert all the other ring doorbell users in the vicinity. Hmm. You can also use the app and kind of move from vicinity to vicinity. If you were thinking about, Hey, I'm thinking about moving to this other location. You can kind of see what people have said about crime in the area, what people have said about just general solicitors coming to Hmm. to doors. Hmm. I, and the other interesting thing that I've seen more than thankfully more than crime is people posting Hey, there's a lost dog. Here's the picture of it. 
here's its last known location with the time and date stamp. <laughs> like people were using it to return pets back to their rightful owners, which I thought was nice. really great. Um, so overall, a weekend, I'm super happy. Um, because I don't have wiring, like I said, this device actually has wiring inputs in the back. I'm using the battery that came with it. Um, How good is the battery life? It's been up for about a week, and oh, it wow. ha- it's I just hit one percent used. Okay. Um, wow. So now they claim six to twelve months off of a single charge. That being said, the battery takes eight hours to charge. Mm-hmm. Um. And I do not have mine set up for always on. And also, does that account for winter months? That I because that's they, probably going to kill the battery too. They, I, I'll let you know in six yeah, months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I've been. I mean, one percent over a week. I mean, mm-hmm. fifty-two weeks in a year. Mm-hmm. You extrapolate that out, right? Um, I'm not overly concerned and i would i would think about running why now that i have this actually set up if i if it do does deplete too fast i would actually consider running wire up to it because i enjoy it so much and i i've also considered running wire to it because if you don't have video always on the the video always on checked um you can't like I can't go into it right now and say show me a live feed of my front door. Mm-hmm. Um, I you can only use it if there's motion or someone hits the doorbell button. Um, it would be kind of neat on occasion to just say hey I want to see what's outside my front door right now. Um, like but, I kind of use the camera now to be like all right is somebody parked like an a hole when I go back here right. you know with my car. Yeah. The, the other cool thing is if you have. Um, the fire cube or other certain TV type devices or the show, the echo show Mm -hmm. or spot. Um, You can say, show me the front door or it'll actually ask act as the doorbell. I was really bummed out. They they sell a a chime type device that you can plug in. So if there's not a phone around, at least you have something making an audible alert that someone's at your front door. Um, it will not just do the audio alert to an Echo Dot. You have to have one of the ones with the screen. Oh, so I'm hoping really? that comes in a future update. We'll see. Um, obviously, there's there's com- competitors to this that I haven't used, like the Nest. Um, but I, I'm, I've been super happy with this device at the at the $199 price level. It's if you're looking for something like this, it's definitely worth it. Um, video quality is good. It's not anywhere near one of my routers, and I'm getting really good connection. The only thing I was surprised is they don't do f- the the five gigahertz frequency. It's only two point four, hmm. but it's good enough for for 1080p video. So uh, I'm totally happy with it. Really happy to hear about the battery life because it's something I've really been thinking about getting, not for my personal house, but for the studio. Mm -hmm. So that way, because I'm not at the studio that often, I do a lot of work from home. And that way, if somebody was there, uh, wanted to meet with us or something, they could hit it and I could talk to them right there. To me, that would be, yeah, super valuable. And that's, I'm really excited to hear about the battery life because I don't own the place since since it's not my house. Mm -hmm. So uh, to me, knowing that it has a long battery life, I know that, you know, even if uh, my landlord doesn't want to run those lines i could still that's make now, now you got me considering it for our own studio yeah you know as, as an option that's something i've been thinking about and, ever since it came out and i was pretty impressed too because i've actually when i didn't read about how long the battery is supposed to last the battery packs are only 29 bucks oh mm. okay so you could for 30 bucks you could have one sitting on standby and yeah quick, quick flip them instead of having to pull it out wait eight hours charge it up um and they it's gotten horrible reviews. So if anyone's used it and has had a good review with it, I'm definitely interested in hearing about it, but they also sell a solar charger mount. Oh, that hmm. will charge the battery anytime there's solar power. Um, but any of the reviews I read about it, it was not good. So, cause I was looking at some aftermarket uh, doorbells similar to ring mm-hmm. and like, like some off brands and all of the re- reviews said the battery life was terrible. So okay. that's why I'm, I'm glad to hear about no, this. I'm, I'm so far so good. Yeah. On wood. Awesome. Brian, what did you, uh, what do you have? So I have two different things this week. Uh, one of them 
has to do, well, speaking of, of Amazon and speaking of the Fire TV Cube, I did get a Fire TV Cube, and I really love it. It's great. What it allows you to do is go completely hands-free, as long as you have a TV that's new enough to, to work with the technology. So I can just sit there on the couch. Like, actually, I've lost my Amazon remote. I don't know where it's at. i got to find it. But I don't need it, because I can go and I can sit on the couch and I could say... Amazon, only only the real word, I'd say, Amazon, turn on the TV, and she'll turn on the TV. And while I'm wa- and I could say, you know, Amazon, watch Star Trek The Next Generation on Netflix, and it'll pull it up. And while I'm watching it, if something, like, like right now there's construction outside of the house, I can then say, Amazon, raise the volume, and she'll know that I'm talking about the actual TV volume, and she'll raise the TV volume, and she'll she can keep raising it every time you mention it, and and lower it every time you mention it. And what's really cool is I have a first generation Echo in the living room as well, and sometimes that Echo will hear me, and it will actually perform functions on the TV. If the Echo is sitting next to the TV hears me instead of the cube, it will so respond. So as context as the TV thing sees it on its kind of attached network. Yeah, and does it. Yeah, which is really, really nice. So I'm really thrilled with it. It's It's been really, really nice. And you can actually, uh, and I'm assuming it's through the infrared cable. Uh, Chilla and I were talking before the show started. It comes with a, an infrared extender. And you can actually control, if you have a sound system, you can control your sound system. You can control your cable box and everything right through that cube, which I think is really cool. I think it, I think it's really worthwhile. As somebody who... I don't know why I'm so determined to not touch a remote anymore. It's really not even that inconvenient. It's just it's something... It's the future, man. That's what it is. I just want it's to live in the future. future feeling of like, I don't have to touch anything, you know? I, I, I know I'd be in really good shape if I happened to be a germaphobe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's amazing because even in this video that you're showing here, it shows the cube. And honestly, it looks it's smaller in real life than it looks like in that video which I'm I'm really just happy with the purchase. I, I got it actually as a gift and and I, I'm loving it. it. It's great and I am I have to figure out what to do with my old fire stick, but it's definitely a worthwhile upgrade. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second item that I got was a PA system. And so we were at the Octi Beer Fest in Millville and we had to do a remote and our old PA system is no longer with us. And RIP. one last Yes. <laughs> So I needed to get a new PA system, and I just looked on Amazon, and I found, like, you know, a super cheap one, 200 bucks for a PA system. I thought, you know, what the hell? If it doesn't work, I'll send it back, get a new one. I got the thing, and we're down there on Grand Avenue in Millville, and I don't even have the volume up a quarter way, and it stretches the throughout the entire street. Like, I could really crank it up and, and the volume level on this thing was fantastic. I was really impressed. And this really is just impressed. a $120 PA system. It was the it was the smallest of the two. There's there's mm-hmm. two. Uh, I got the smaller one, and just on the smaller one, it, it's great. There are some big downsides to it though that I don't like. I mean, for the price, I can't really complain. It also comes with the stands to mount the speakers, which I, I like. The downside to it is it has a serious lack of inputs. Okay. A serious lack of inputs. So basically, what I did is I ran one quarter inch out of my soundboard and ran that into the. They have like a guitar input speaker like a guitar quarter inch input on the back of one of the speakers and that's what i use to run my broadcast Uh, it doesn't have as many inputs as i would like and another big issue is the cable the audio cable that connects both of the speakers it only only goes a certain length and it's not an xlr it's like some sort of proprietary like cable Mm. so if it goes the cable goes i gotta get a new pa system wait is it one that looks like an xlr is it like a looks kind of like an xlr but it's not really yeah 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 there's there's an all uh, i I forget the the name of them but i think i know which one that is yeah i'm not a fan of that i wish it just came with a straight xlr and i'm kind of limited as in how far apart i can put the speakers but really the volume level was just super impressive i barely had it turned up and i could fill the entire event w- with just like a very very little volume. If I was that is some that future proofing right there. <laughs> What's that? That's some future proofing to when you you are at a bigger venue. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, if I'm somewhere else and I need to really crank it, I can do so. So this is the um because I don't think we said the name of this is the Ignite Pro series. Yeah, um, it's on Amazon again for oh I'm sorry 199 dollars. Yeah. Um and yeah, speaker DJ PA system, Bluetooth connectivity. 
uh, 2000 watt. Uh, there's a 10 inch and four. Yeah, there's a bigger one as well. I got about thirty dollars more, thirty five dollars more. You can get the twelve inch version. Yeah. So honestly, I don't think you need it for the. Uh, depending on what you're doing, if you're just like running your own like home little uh, party PA system, which is what most people are. Most people aren't going to buy this for professional use. No, I did it. No, no, no. I did it because I was in a pinch and I needed something quickly. But uh, but it really does well. Like if you have a big summer party outside and you you have a big yard, you could fill the entire place and really pump the music and get the neighbors to call and complain with that small little $200 PA system. And that's the true test of a PA. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Awesome. The one thing real quick on the the cube that I was pretty impressed with when we were talking earlier Mm -hmm. is you don't have to have your TV on to use certain aspects of it. You don't. So I almost view this as the, hey, am I going to get an Echo or am I going to get the TV? I would opt for the TV just based on any of the voice commands like, hey, mm mm-hmm set a timer for 10 minutes that all still works without the tv being on because it has its own internal it does. speaker yeah so to me that's just win-win and it's kind of fun when you ask it to do a command on the actual tv itself you see the little blue line the the echo blue line that glows you see that glow on the top of the tv oh that's super which cool. is kind oh, of fun. yeah nice. so it lo- turns your tv basically into an echo show in some ways hmm and if you set an alarm, it'll show, it'll come up like it does on the Echo Show with the little like alarm screen that you're used to seeing on the show. It has all of that uh, built in with it as well. It's really nice. And I, I haven't played with the volume of the actual cube to see how loud the speaker is on the cube itself because I have the first gen right next to it, which has a much, in my, I'm guessing probably a much better speaker. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't really know how loud it goes. I'll have to play with that. We'll have to test that for sure. Yeah. So my awesome thing is, man, I, I keep getting tied into the services where I don't have to pay for games. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I, you know, I think we may have talked about that. I did connect with Twitch Prime uh, a while ago because I have Amazon Prime and realized, oh, hey, this is a thing. Um, so it makes sense, you know, as much as like I, I use Twitch for the business stuff, like you know the the replay feed where this will pop up on Sorgatron Media on Twitch. Uh, we're using Twitch for our indie wrestling to us. So I attached the Sorgatron Media to it because I th- I figured that's where we're going to do most of the maybe gaming content, and we do from time to time. We did with Extra Life this weekend with the marathon. Uh, by the way, we fi- uh, raised uh, five hundred seventy-five dollars for uh, Children's Miracle Hospital Network. Ooh, um, congratulations! So, thank you everybody that that contributed to that and came by the studio and everything, and and you know, contributed online from from you know friends from California were contributing for us, uh, and that was really awesome. Bobby and my brother Matt were in here uh, doing that. Um, but and we have stuff with uh, Brohemoth doing the video game uh, stuff with the wrestlers. They are potentially going to be in here Friday. I think we're talking about. So, but yes. Can I give you a quick aside? We have somebody from South Africa who is watching the show. I met him Currently? through the yeah. Okay. I met him through the International Podcast Day uh, event. He was one of the broadcasters. Nice. He's listening in on the chat right now. Nice. So. Welcome. Welcome to the Awesome Cast. But uh, so I, I I connected a little bit ago, and I think they had a big month of giveaways over on Twitch. And then I was like, oh, I should probably install this on one of my PCs, which is actually the PC that's here that we do our when Chilla comes from Studio C. It's this computer over here. And uh, I found myself playing Metal Slug 3, which is amazing, by the way. There's a section that, that deals with zombies. And if you die, you first become a zombie before you die and have a really good um, blood throw up uh, attack that, that that's really effective. <laughs> um, so I happened to look in there uh, at some point and realized, holy crap, I have a lot of games now. Uh <laughs> This is like this is the last couple of months, and I always you know see the notification when I go in and check on the feeds. Hey, this is a lot of um, kind of indie games, a couple bigger things like Brutal Legend is a game that had Jack Black in it. Uh, there's a Dark Siders game in there. There's a Devil May Cry remake. I mean, there is a lot of stuff. There's one of those Telltale's um, um, Tales from Borderlands ones. Um, this is about uh, you know, geez, I don't know why this isn't scrolling. There you go. So, uh, System Shock, um, but uh, it, it, uh, Super Hot is a game I keep being told I have to I have to play. Uh, but it looks like a lot of fun stuff that I can't wait to just dive in and experiment with, and, and see what's good in there. Uh, Q, Cubo Two, uh, Serial was that Serial Cleaner? Uh, it's, you know, weird oddball <laughs> titles here and there. Um, but again, like you know, I love just experimenting with new and different video games. Uh, the Wizardry series, there's like 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 three of those, uh, six, seven, and eight are in there. 
uh, some old school games there. So it, it, it's just a, a pretty cool little addition. So even if you're not using Twitch on a regular basis, but you do play video games from time to time, go connect your accounts and check in every once in a while. And you never know what you're going to get and find and like out of there. So, um, is, and, yeah. Is, is this like games with gold where you have to come in and you have to click the thing, yeah. click the thing to buy for free yes. and then you get it forever or is oh, it? I don't, so I don't know how long you have it forever or anything like that. Um, but there is also Twitch has their own app for PC. That's kind of like um, a little bit of you marry um, Steam because I think you can purchase. I, I think if you buy things on a- Amazon now, they're through this app if you buy a okay. game like a digital game right you don't get a steam code as much anymore or maybe you do I, I i don't know maybe they're both available but it also integrates in like it wanted to uh look into my steam and find friends on steam that are also on twitch and and bring those together too so it, it is kind of handshaking a little bit there too so kind of a you know again a nice fun thing that that uh you know maybe you can experiment and again these are these are not games honestly out of all the games in this collection <laughs> There's probably about three that I know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and knew going into it. And again, Metal Slug 3 was one of them, right? But that's an old, you know, Metal Slug is an old uh, uh, Neo Geo game, right? Uh, the series and arcade and everything like that. Um, and I just, you know, love those shoot and bump games uh, like that. So uh, go check it out. Again, connect your Twitch Prime. Check in every once in a while. You never know what kind of free stuff. And there's offers for other things. There's like uh, we, we had special loot in um, uh, uh, fight Fortnite, for instance, where you get an extra costume and a you know, objects and things like that. So, um, it, 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 you know, the usually hot games on Twitch. Um, so if you're kind of up on what's going on there, you might get some extra cool stuff from Twitch. So, I mean, there's there's a lot going into it. And, and again, if you have Amazon Prime, completely all included. So and That's the thing. That people keep talking about breaking up Amazon. And in some ways you're thinking, yeah, they're getting too big and it's worrisome. But at the same time, it's like, Look at all the things that you can get. <laughs> That's how they get you, man. That's how they get you. Yeah. It's good. It's bad. Right now, it's a good consumer thing. Yeah. You can get some free games and play some games. That's oh, where that's we're great. at with this. But, you know, then there's all the other things, of course, right? So, all right. Well, hey, I want to give a shout out to our friends at the Comic Book Pit. Our Ooh. good friends, they, uh, they, I think they're coming in Sunday for their next recordings, if I recall. And they usually do those um, live online, especially when we have internet here, uh, because there was a problem with Ooh. that. Uh, so, uh, but no, Comic Book Pit is Pittsburgh's longest running comic book podcast. It brings fun conversation and uh, a kind of conversational atmosphere to both longtime comic book fans and readers, um, uh, new readers, and covers uh, uh, comic related news and across all types uh, uh, from movies, television, insider news, uh, to reviews of weekly comic books. You can find more at comicbookpit.com or go look them up on the Facebook where you can see some stuff, uh, including their uh, v- video of their recent uh, dollar comic book event up there in Elwood City with New Dimension. There's a lot of, they do, they do have a lot of commentary on here and Instagram about what's going on. I know they're diving into that new DC Universe app. I know, I think we've been eyeballing that for a little bit and see, still seeing if that's going to be worthwhile or if that new uh, Teen Titans uh, live action show is going to be any good. Uh, so all questions we hope to answer soon, and hopefully Comic Book Pit will help us. Go check them out. Part of the Sorgatron Media Network here at comicbookpit.com. Go subscribe to them. Um, creeping up on their 300th episode here, too. Ooh. So one of the uh, one of the longest running uh, uh, shows in the How long in- have they been going on for? A long time. That's what I was going to say. At yeah. least 10 years. Wow. So um, they've, had, they've had some hiatuses. Still, but, that, yeah. that's impressive. All right, let's get into um, the stories that you guys have out there. Um, this is this is all stuff that uh, that was part of the Facebook group for Awesome Cast in the past week. Um, do 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 do. <laughs> I'm trying to hold on. I'm trying to. So this is one that Alex Cars put to us, and this this let's lead to our gold for this week, of course. So there was Project Rush that was going around, and I believe was something along the lines of. You know, it, this is the thing that was this. This was the holy grail that was going to cross over our mobile and our regular ask for Adobe and 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 Premiere and Photoshop and things like that. So Project Rush is now Premiere Rush, and the idea is, and we're getting a little bit of promo video for you guys on video. Um, the idea is, you know, you you go and you take your video with your phone. You have an editor on the phone. By the way, when I 
get when I see it on here, it looks strangely like iMovie. I just want to point that out. But then that syncs through Creative Cloud and you can bring it over to a desktop and, and continue with the edit. Um, that's that's pretty cool that you know we're, we're getting that kind of crossover thing. It's using a Creative Cloud. It's only going to be $10 a month, so it's a little more accessible to you then you know paying for premiere at the higher rates you know i mean we're up to for the entire suite we're up to like 54 dollars a month i think at this point but we use like bits and pieces of a lot of uh, a lot of the adobe stuff and uh and, and on our apps and everything so um i i think this is this is kind of the next step and, and perfect for like a lot of the people that kind of well one chilla you were saying this is this is the answer for the pc people right right and that's that's always been my thing about one reason to buy a Mac if you're just getting into wanting to create some kind of podcast with video or do any basic video type work is there's nothing on the PC that's that takes you from beginner or hey I just need to crop video throw in an intro do a fade in fade out some minor tweaking um, throw a title throw titles in there whatever um, there's nothing that I have found on the PC at the cheap or free level that kind of fills the gap that iMovie can fill. Mm. What um, about the, the great Windows Movie Maker? No. <laughs> That's not out there anymore. They, oh, they they, yeah, there. they don't even support it. Yeah, that. they don't wow. even support it anymore. You, and they, and wow. I know there were people, especially in the wrestling industry, did a lot of creative things with Movie Maker that were impressive oh. because that's the tool they had and they worked around the limitations. Right. I hmm. used Movie Maker. Yes, you oh, did. Wow. Because I am not a Mac person. I'm a PC person. So stepping into a Mac world like Sorg is was completely foreign to me. But I was able to go in and do something quickly and easily and just get it in, get it out. It was good. Hmm. Went to get into it, and then it was just no longer there. And I was so irritated. So I'm kind of interested in this, to be honest. Yep. And see, I think this is this is and perfect. I'm and I'm presuming We're, we'll have it as part of our Creative Cloud, right? God, I, I, so. I would think so. I would, I would think so. What, what I hope they do with this, and they, they've done it with, they've done it with Premiere, they've done it with Photoshop, to get around the ten dollar a month subscription. There's the Elements package where you don't have if you if you don't want to worry about having to sync via the Creative Cloud, and you just want the app or the application on your laptop, desktop, there is, whatever. There is a free starter version, too. Yeah, there's a free starter version, mm. but I'm guessing that's time-boxed. Uh, well, you get three exports and two gigabytes of cloud storage. Okay. So if I need to make a video, you know, yeah. you can go do it. And, but, and I, but what I'd, I'd like to see a non a, a non subscription-based mm -hmm. version mm -hmm. of this. Um, but super, super cool, super easy to get to. I'm impressed they're bringing it to iOS, Android, all the platforms. I should have done this before um, the show, but I'm completely downloading it right now. Well, <laughs> Let's see if my login works. There's there's a question from Dave Podner. Uh, if I have a Mac and not already in the Adobe system, is this worth it? Mm. See, that's where. See, if you if you're it have a Mac, and you know if you if you use iMovie on the Mac, that is in the cloud. And in the iCloud and and can roll right over into your iMovie and Premiere or Final Cut on your Apple video applications on the PC. So honestly, like if you're on Apple, you already have this ability for basically free. Right. Yeah. Right. Other than maybe you need to pay for iCloud to be able to support like the size of movies to transfer over, depending on how much you're doing. Um, I want to point out I'm doing a lot of editing on my phone. Like a lot of editing on my phone. Is that uh, hard to do? Because without a mouse, I have a hard time editing. Um, let's see. Um, you tell me how many videos I've been doing. Yeah. Have you seen my gathering of jugglers videos? Yeah, a few of you them. You know, yeah. that's all. That was shot and edited on my phone. Oh wow! Completely. Last last Thursday with Twisted, shot and edited on my phone. These um these videos, these community videos that we've been doing, like uh, with the uh, cleanup or the the comic book pit video that I mentioned. Um, you know, the Canton Avenue dedication. Those are things shot and edited with my phone. And they do, by the way, they do just as well on Facebook as some of the ones I put a lot of expensive stuff into, right? You know, a lot of time and put, you know, export, put it in Final Cut and do it that way. You know, it's just like, hey, I can do this before I go to bed on mm -hmm. my phone and put it together, right? 
um, in, in in the break time. Like this is this is if you spend a little bit of time to get around it and figure out where the limitations are, this is a very 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 powerful tool or hmm. a thing that you can get started with, and then go to an iMovie or a Final Cut with more flexibility later. So I uh, I'd say Apple, man, if you're not already like all Adobe, I I, I don't know. Yeah, I would. I would. Here's here's where I would go with that is fire up iMovie, figure out what you can't do, and then figure out can you actually do what you're trying to do with Rush. Yes, but in Rush is not a full featured. Yeah, premiere and that's app. why I say that's why I say this see is see if you can do what it, you want to do with Rush. This looks fairly iMovie ish. Yes. Yeah. But so. but I but I feel like it brings that tier over to the PC that's been missing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been a big gap because I everybody I always get that question: What should I get for editing on a PC? And I'm like, I have no answer for people. So, well, this unless is, you want to spend the money for Premiere, right, 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 exactly. That's, that's the problem: is we're, we're you're trying to hit that. To me, it's no more than fifty dollars per year mark. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's why I have a problem with the nine the ninety nine ninety nine a month, mm-hmm. um, unless they come out with like, hey, we'll give it to you introductory fifty dollars a year or something if you pay for a year up front. That's where I think that sweet spot comes in. If you're the if you're the person just getting into podcasting or you just want to do some simple, hey, I I want to put these five videos together from my phone and add a title screen in and do a, a, a fade in, fade out at the front and back. Um, that's where I feel like th- there's nothing on the PC side today. Mm-hmm. And and maybe I wasn't Windows going to get what s- stories or it's built into the photos app now. I, I don't know. But and, and maybe Microsoft will answer back to this. But th- this is a to me, this is filling a major gap on the PC side. So hey, who wants to go to a field trip for to Toronto? Because yeah. there is a sweet Mario Kart bar up there. Ooh, uh, this one uh, Alex Cars had the last one. Uh, uh, this is from the Riz out there. Riz plays games. Uh, yeah, but the title the title in Nar City is "Forget Dinner and a Movie: Ruin Your Relationship Over Mario Kart at This Toronto Bar Instead." <laughs> uh, so no, it's an absolutely themed bar, uh, <laughs> and of course you are set up to play. Mario Kart all around at the tables in these sweet booths and stuff. I mean, it looks like a swanky bar. I'll go. So I'm just hoping it's it's a little more licensed. Isn't going to get shut down, just like uh, just like the the, the ones in uh, Japan where they had the the, the go karting, <laughs> the Mario go karting that did not last too long. Uh, so uh, yeah, so that that's up there. I go. You know, I'm I'm ready to go to the Mario Kart. Yeah, I'd do it bar for sure. Right? That's incredible. <laughs> you should set one up in the back of the studio. <laughs> oh, so many ideas for pop-ups, man. So many ideas. And then Amanda, I didn't, get, I didn't dive too much into this, but Amanda was saying that uh, she installed the Wired app on her Apple TV, and uh, her geek site is now in love, currently watching the Google Pixel 3 announcement. So I didn't know, you know, our, we just, we just uh, restarted. I thought Apple would block that. I know, right? <laughs> um I'm sure you could get it on the YouTube app as well, but probably not without. Also, not with Wired's. Con- it was. I wonder, did Wired do commentary over top of it? It might be, but I, I think it's just like you know, you get all that content in there. It's also to YouTube, but it's also like they have the in-house thing too, right? Um, so it's. I don't. Know, I don't have much else about it other than um, them them this little thing about them talking about it. So I they've. You know, in Gadget and, and everybody always has a lot of video content for those sites. So I, I can see, especially as in depth as the articles are in, for Wired, and I have seen some really good ones uh, as well. But I didn't know if it was something that, you know, you want to check in on every once in a while mm-hmm. for stuff like that. Makes sense for announcements and things like that. Uh, so uh, it, we, we just got a subscription to Wired and we're waiting for our first issue. I don't know. They love sending us all of our Time magazines and stuff. We had a bunch of points through one of the airlines I go through, and we're like, well, I'm not getting enough to get a free flight, so let's just get some free magazines, right? Hmm. I've already re- I, re- re- I already hate that decision because of the stuff. Speaking of, of Prime and Awesome and magazines, did you know you can actually get magazines through your Prime subscription and read them for free? Uh like on Kindle like kind of yeah, apps and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I, I was surprised by that. I was able to they had some like I, I don't know if you can like get every edition of a magazine, but they right. have a select few you can read through and and some prominent magazines too, like like 
National Geographic level mm. magazines, not just like you know your tabloid type stuff. Yeah, I, well, they also have through their because there's 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 di- two different parts. There's like a Kindle Unlimited, and then there's a Kindle Reader or something. Like there's two different levels. One of them is like the Prime. Here's the free stuff. That's like, what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, and then there's like one you can pay a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had a number of comic books come down from it. Um, because of uh, comic books and other things, like there's this, there's a um, jeez, what do I have in here? Like I have like Darth Vader and Star Wars comics from oh, Marvel wow. are in there. Uh, usually, like maybe it, it looks like you'll get like the first trade, you okay. know. So you'll go buy the rest of the series. I Makes think sense. is the big the big push there. Um, like you know, I have one that's like the first. Um, the uh, we'll look at the Thor, um, the, the where where um Jane Foster became Thor um you know because i wanted to check that out when they were kind of mixing things up um so yeah no it's always kind of interesting to poke around for things like that so like doing this thing like okay what's over on kindle for free what's over on hoopla right now Mm -hmm. you know kind of thing um hoopla is the app for the uh, local library yeah Uh, you know check your library system if you're in carnegie uh library system it's free and they have plenty of stuff and they are very on top of hey the venom movie come out want to go read venom comics like it's just like when I had Marvel Unlimited. It's not quite as it's good. My it's only good. issue with Hoopla, I heard you talking about it on a previous show, is sometimes with Hoopla when you're listening to audiobooks, it will like mix up the words or, or, or like like it'll like it'll skip or it'll like you you feel like you miss things. Like it's mm. not as smooth. Okay. And it might just be in areas with bad reception because I work in a be. building that has like huge block walls. Mm-hmm. But it was kind of annoying because like with the podcasting apps, it'll upload to a certain point where it's ahead of the game so even if there is an interruption in service and it'll see if there's a download stream. option too there is, is it, there is, is, there, is yeah okay. but even with the podcast if you don't download them the app instinctively downloads a little bit ahead of what it's streaming right so you don't get that interruption but i've had that right. with hoopla before but it's definitely an app that but other has than a... that for free it's great oh yeah absolutely yeah. i mean it's just your tax dollars at work <laughs> which is amazing I'm uh, okay with paying taxes on, on things like that. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, all right. Hey, I want to give a shout out to our friend Slice on Broadway. I know you you're you, you're digging on it uh, there, Brian. We talked about it at the Always. top of the show, right? Also, we had a little bit of an encounter last week where our friend the Beast Man um, went into Slice on Broadway. Ooh. You can go check that out. They shared it over there and over at the. Uh, we shared on indie wrestling dot us. Um, yeah, he's been going into establishments and he really wanted pizza. They tried to hand him a salad and it didn't work out so well. <laughs> our friends supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time. Thank you so much to our friends there. Uh, feeding our guests here at dinner time for the awesome cast. Go check them out at slice on broadway.com for locations, including the original right up the street from here on Broadway Avenue in the Beachview neighborhood and uh, let them know the awesome cast sent you. Okay, we have a couple other stories here doing a time check. And uh, let's see what we got. Um, Loading, loading, loading. Chilla, what do you want to touch on here? So I thought this was an interesting one. Number, number, throw up number five. So there was an article, and I do a lot of... You're like, cute number five, Sorg. Cute number five, Sorg. (laughs) On screen. Um, Wait a minute. (laughs) (laughs) So so I do a lot of screenshots and trying to make things look as authentic as they would right in front of the person to mm-hmm. try to really convey um, what someone should be doing within a certain application or, or something along those lines. And I think we, we covered Siri shortcuts a while back where you can take and kind of create low-end scripts on iOS where it'll run through and do a bunch of, of steps right in a row. Um, this, uh, article from MacStories.net. if you get a chance to look it up, it's called, uh, Apple frames, a shortcut for framing screenshots from every Apple device. Yeah. So this person, and I'm not sure of, if it, uh, Federico Vitici, a fine, a fine gentleman he is, went and actually got screen the, the, the photos of iPads, iPhones, Macs, MacBooks, Apple Watches, you name it. He got really good photo photography work of the device cropping out the screen region. 
So if you take a screenshot in any one of those devices and you have it on your device, you can actually create a script that will then take that screenshot and plug it into the device itself based on the, and he already has the correct pixel settings chopped out. Um, so I thought this was super awesome. Even if you, even if you wanted to mock up your own and weren't taking a screenshot on the device, just the fact that he's taken the time to collect all of the sample with with the screen already pre-cut out where you can put your own content in there. Mm -hmm. I thought it was super nice. I mean, I don't know for you if doing any podcast, like on podcast artwork, like if you want a picture of the phone with the, with the awesome cast podcast playing on the screen, like those types of things that just really make that, the, that uh, artwork pop. I, I think this is, this is amazing. So what is this, a collection? Is it an app? What what is it's that? a collection? So what 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 he did was it's a collection of the frames that you then put in a photo folder. Then you can actually take any photo from your photo, any screenshot from your photo library, and process it through shortcuts, and it will put it all together for you in like a single tap. So this is to me. This is what if you haven't played around with Siri shortcuts, this isn't this is an easy step by step to realize also the power of it. You you were talking earlier, right, with iMovie and how hey, I did this all from my phone. This is another one of those things where if you wanted to build one of these, right, you just take this, put all the put all the his uh, his photo elements or mm -hmm. frames. Mm -hmm. um, on your device and then take a screenshot and process it through here, through Siri shortcuts and bing, bang, boom. Oh, wow. You got all your artwork done. Huh? So I, 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 I to me, it combines two things. Someone that took the, the, the artwork and the time to build all the frame shots. And then this allows you to really churn through a decent amount of work rather relatively quickly. Awesome. Wow. And do I find this in the shortcut app? Do I look this up or no? You so the the article on Mac Stories, he actually put his, um, he actually has the shortcut pre built for you, um, so you can grab it. Oh, there. here at the here at the end. Okay, yeah, here there at the end, and then he has all the frames, the, all the artwork to to put on your device too. So I that. should click on this on my iPhone and it'll do all the process. It right? should. Okay. Wow, that's awesome. I want. To I want to see about grabbing that and playing with that then. Cool. And I think there's someone said there's a Reddit out there where it's like everyone put together their coolest shortcut recipes. Like someone has one, like I'm getting pulled over by the cops <laughs> where it literally wow. sends a text to your significant other blacks out the screen, turns on the camera and starts recording. Oh, wow. Like, <laughs> Because you can script everything, right? Oh yeah. So like they, they and you can make this the the command whatever you want. Yeah. So like that's one of the one of the recipes I've seen out there. There's there's a couple Reddit threads with like really cool ideas of of these shortcut scripts that you can huh. you can build yourself. You can take what they have directly, augment it, do whatever you want. Wow, that's an interesting idea. It's it's, it's like the if this then that. Yeah. For directly for apps on your iphone that's awesome yeah we're only starting to, to kind of discover the power of that uh i think uh so apple also uh this came out in, and this is I, this is not officially from apple i believe this was a leak out or something um apple's original shows uh may be free for device owners um but you got to use the tv app and of course if you're using apple tv like that's basically how you can connect through and see other basically everything but Netflix. Like, hey, the mm -hmm. next episode of Game of Thrones is up, you know, and it, it helps track that kind of thing and, and pull it together. Um, but that app's on, not just on Apple TV, right? That's on it's on the phone, phone and and too. The iPad yeah. And so basically, anything that you have that's that's Apple and watches video, um, you can you can watch these shows that they're doing. And we're talking about like huh. an M Night Shyamalan movie, uh, a show. We're talking about you know other things like that, like some pretty high level stuff that they're working on. From Are the these of Apple produced shows, Apple what you produced mean? Okay. shows. So it's kind of like the like the Prime Studio, yes. or like Netflix okay. original. They already yeah. did one called Planet of the Apps that had like Quentin Paltrow and. <laughs> 
Gary Vaynerchuk, and it, it was it was Shark Tank for app developers. Okay, you're gonna love this. So your pitch, your your elevator pitch, you were I think weren't they literally on an escalator, and they had until they got to the top of the escalator to finish their pitch to them. Wow, like you're moving on an escalator giving a pitch. <laughs> it's like giving an elevator pitch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's funny. So. Yeah, that that's the kind of stuff that happened. It's been it's been um, kind of across the board, really, just just slammed for how how ridiculous it was. Was it uh, was, <laughs> carpool karaoke was fun? Carpool, I couldn't get I couldn't that. get into Planet of the Apps, but carpool yeah. karaoke I I've enjoyed it. I enjoyed it on James. And these Gordon these are things. These th- thank you. So we were I trying can, to figure out his name when the, uh, earlier. So I can watch those through the iPad. You can watch those through the iPad. Well, now those ones I think you need. Google or Apple Music. So you have to right? be an Apple Music subscriber for the uh, ones what, now. For the ones now, what they're saying is there's a okay. potential that they're going to open those all up. Okay. If, if you merely own a device, it's going to be free. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, we're talking about now. There was a story about a lot of these, like like the M Night Shyamalan um, shows, like they they were taking away like certain references and crosses and things like that from the show. Um, there's other ones have been basically told to just tone down their content. Um, and it was kind of an odd move. And now we, if, if this is true, it's free. They're not going to want to ruffle any feathers by having like racy content out there. Right. For See, doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of going to online streaming media? It though? depends on what your target is. I think, I guess, but you know, that's what cables for it's safe, right? Mm-hmm. That's what the antennas for it's safe. You go online to get away from safe. Mm. So to me, putting these restrictions on, not saying that you want to go out there and just, you know, mother F this and that, but I feel like, you know, the reason why uh, why Netflix has become popular and why people are moving to Prime Video and things like that is because they don't have to worry about censorship in, in the content. Right, but, but it's... But again, if that's the kind of thing you want to do, Right, Apple. Uh, although I, I, I caution Apple for do, uh, uh, accepting the shows they accepted. Amazing Stories was another one. They think it's too dark. Right, um, like you don't go to Disney Channel and do a horror show. Right, uh, Apple wants to be well, the Disney Channel. I, th- I think of, they want. I think they want yeah. to, to be the family friendly. Yes. Area and, and the one thing I will say, and and if someone else is. Is if someone's figured out how to do it on Android, please let me know because it would be a lot cheaper for me. But the parental controls that are on Apple devices from the don't allow any podcasting explicit content, don't don't allow any TV shows over like um, I can't even remember what the, the rating is for like under 12, like don't allow any games to be purchased that are that are above four and up like the amount of controls that i can put for a kid on a device now the moment that you even put even to me youtube kids on a device it blows it out of the water Mm -hmm. because you can't they don't they do a really good job but they aren't perfect yes there are problems there are problems right but the way that I can tune the device in coordination and and in concert with all of the media that Apple has, yeah, even the the pay content, R rated movies, whatever, I can completely tune that device to be, without a doubt, handable to a kid and not have to worry. Well, I'm a big advocate of parental controls and having that as a, as an available option. I just don't think that they should. Hand, handcuff themselves for their mature audiences yeah. well, as and well. I, and I guess they, they view it as you can go onto iTunes and download any movie from any other. They're just not going to generate yeah. their they own They just don't want to be like, I, I, yeah, it's the tone of the the, the, the thing, you know. It, it, they want to be, okay, like Nickelodeon's not going to make a horror movie. Let's, let's say it yeah. that way, right? Apple is kind of trying to establish... They did have Are You Afraid of the Door? Okay, yes, but, <laughs> but, but, but not, still... It, uh, Apple is trying to establish what their voice is, right? Yeah. Just Hello. because they can doesn't mean they think they should. Yeah. And they want to have they want to have a line, right? Um, you know, so you know that that's the way they've chosen to handle it, right? Not saying right or wrong. Yeah. And, and they do have the ability to go that way if they want to, and maybe they will down the line. But right now, for the first like 
crop of these. And they want to make sure it's very accessible widely. And um, no, this is the same company that has had a lot of not censorship c- concerns, maybe a little bit because they would eliminate certain apps that have certain content from their stores um, that maybe seemed a little like, you know, anything that you could possibly get pornography through, um, even though we have web browsers. Right? Yeah, exactly. Actually, I think that at first, I think that's one of the reasons why they did not have web browsers in there. Like was that was one of the reasonings was you can get porn on them so that they're automatically 17 plus. I mean, who is it's, Apple it's, to come down and dictate morality? Uh, and I mean, I like Apple. Uh, I've yes, got an it's iPad. their platform. So it's, it's I know. that's who they but are. But what I'm saying is they're the same company that uses like child labor over in Asia and they're dictating your <laughs> morals to you. I mean, come on. Well, we get to cover that up in the store it is, yeah. is the point. That, that's the frame. I mean, that's and I the, like Apple. I'm not that's the face, Apple. That's the face of it that they get to control. Yeah. So that, that's cover, the tone. me unimpressed with uh, moral, with, <laughs> Apple's moral high ground. Yeah. But well, they, but worst they, thing is, you just don't watch it and watch something else, right? And they, they but flop. It, but as a platform, yeah. anyone can can put an explicit podcast out there as exactly. a TV show. Exactly. Yeah. They're just saying, so, I mean, they're just saying, they're saying Apple is saying their we own don't, generated yes. content. Yeah. They're, they're just saying out. we will not be responsible for making more than a certain line mm-hmm. internally, just for their own whatever friendliness reasons. So, all right, guys. Hey, you know what's friendly? Our friends at <laughs> Bach. Wow, <laughs> not Brian Crawford. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Occupy Pro Wrestling. I know it's not a Hans Funeral Home transition, but <laughs> <laughs> our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling want to show their support to a good cause for uh, uh, breast, breast Cancer Awareness Month, and uh, they'd love to uh, you, have you be a part of it. When you buy their merch at What a Maneuver, uh, for 50, 50% of all normal merch proceeds will go to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. But wait, there's more. Uh, they're finally releasing merch with their logo, and they even have it in pink, and 100% of the proceeds from those items will be going to the foundation. Please check them out uh, at OccupyProWrestling.com and their gear at WhatAManeuver.net. There's a link over at Occupy Pro Wrestling straight to their store and get more information on the Breast Cancer Research Foundation at BC. I'm sorry, yes, BCRF. Dot org. Uh, awesome thing they have going on there with Occupy Pro Wrestling. Go support them. So um i but i had a note here from producer missy do 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 uh dave ponder says he thinks that the r workflow is still active over on reddit chilla ah okay mm-hmm. so a little so you can go poke at that a little bit too so coming up we have uh, well if you're in a beach view area there's this really cool thing called color beach view um, there's a, we did a little preview video of it from the uh, second workshop. Um, there's a, there's an artist coming in that is you know has this cool LED system that anybody can wear and make art with, and uh, we're, they're making digital art that's going to be displayed on uh, one wrapped around a T train that will be coming through. There was a big beach view on the side, uh, from what I understand, and also uh, it, it, you know anybody from the elderly the kids can 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 be involved with this and their movements become the art and everything uh there's a preview video over at psychic media services and shared over on the event but um that will be this thursday october 18th at um at uh, uh 3 30 p.m at the um senior center down here at beachview right on the right, right where the the train bends around the file field station um also and I think that's all the big events we have going on. Uh, uh, what am no. I missing? We are actually gearing up for our Small Business Saturday. We are gearing up for Small B2. Business Saturday at uh, near the end of November here. I keep forgetting what it's. Oct- I can't believe it's mid-October. I yeah. I was um, like, oh, that's like two months away. Nope. Nope. Not at all. Yeah. Uh, so there will be a lot of festivities here in Beachview. We encourage you to come down, visit the studio. And uh, last year we had a face painter and live music here just at Sorgatron Media. And I know uh, uh, Missy is working with our friends uh, over at Sparkle Dragon and the BMA. Um, and uh, they're going to be doing, they're going to try to um, have a lot of stuff going on here um, all through the, the Beachview area, right? Yep. Uh, we're in the planning process of everything. But we're trying to have some entertainment. We're trying to have some stuff to have people come out with you know their their kids maybe you know come out solo so that you can do some shopping for your kids type mm-hmm. of stuff uh so yeah we're, we're gonna have some announcements coming out about that here shortly awesome. uh, the other fun thing that you're failing to mention is the halloween you you just glossed right over that with your with your halloween or with your october stuff so there's a really cool event happening here in beachview as well uh with tolan fx so 
those who aren't familiar, Tolan FX does like special effects for you know the the movies. So zombies, monsters, all that fun jazz. Uh, it's going to be a pretty fun event happening here in Beachview on Halloween night. Yeah, part of the Romero lives. Uh, you can check it out over at uh, TolanFX.com. It's going to be wrestling and a whole bunch of other stuff going on. And we'll be around as well. It's going to be a trick-or-treat night. Um, and it's free for everyone to attend. So go check that out and be part of that. Doug Bradley, Pinhead, is going to be here. And uh, he's going to be uh, he's going to be reading some Edgar Allan Poe uh, as part of his uh, Spine Chiller series. Uh, so live music, whole bunch of cool cool stuff. So go check that out over at TolanFX.com. And there's a recent interview on the Pittsburgh Current podcast recorded right here with uh, uh, Steve Tolan talking about all the stuff he's doing in the neighborhood too. So is that everything? Is that everything, producer Missy? I, I think that's everything. All right, that's good. Brian Crawford, thank you for joining us thank here. You. What's going on? Uh, it's RiversEdgePGH.com. I'll be back Friday night, 7 p.m. on the RiversEdgePGH.com slash live page. And uh, you can always just catch me hanging around. I'm on Twitter at RiverTalkPGH. Awesome. John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter. ChillaTech.net. John Chichilla on the Facebook. And I just think I screwed up the doc. Uh-oh. Sorry. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh, you're going to have to deal with producer Missy on that. Sorgatron on the Twitter. I uh, got a lot of go- stuff going on there. And, of course, also the um, SorgatronMedia.com with so much uh, happening there as well. All the great, great podcasts, uh, including our friends who just got in here for uh, for uh, the next show. Uh, Toddy from Thrifty Podcasts Ooh. having new episodes on there. Of course, going to be joining us on Wrestling Mayhem Show as well. Thank you, everybody that has joined us in the chat room all night long here again, 7 p.m. Eastern Time on the Awesome Gast Facebook page. We do go live, and you can be part of the conversation. Missy, uh, producer Missy, make sure that I don't miss you guys out there as I'm juggling through all my tabs and everything uh, trying to conduct the show. Uh, but thank you, everybody, that's a part of this and uh, yeah, contributes to the show in that uh, aspect as well. Thank you, everybody out there. You have been awesome. You, Boober, you have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.